Welcome back. I'm Kim Bailey. She's fully Ann Rosborn and this is Inside Exec. We are concluding our discussion with John Tarnoff and with co-host Jamie Wadley for the session today. We're going to look at how you identify and why you should identify your superpower and how we are not human beings but human becomings. The final question, then we'll go on to some general topics, was about... The, the fact that on, in, on this podcast we've spoken lots of times about building networks and it's something that I'm particularly uncomfortable about because I don't like talking to people generally <laughs> and I don't, <laughs> don't like letting people in, not, not happy well, with it. Well, Prison can be excluded, of course. And you're run, you run a podcast, so that's kind of, uh, that kind of doesn't make very much sense, right? Oh, you know, but this is my foray into things that make me uncomfortable. Right. Well, that's good. <laughs> In terms of building a network, where do you start if you've always worked in isolation? So if you've always worked on your own as a consultant, gone in, done the the consulting thing and moved out, for someone like me who has always worked, not always, but for the last 40 years, has worked away from an established corporate environment where I went in every day to the same place, how do you start? And I I live in a regional area in New South Wales, so I'm in the the wine country area. I'm away from the major cities. So how do I start building a network when I do and I am comfortable working in isolation? Do I need a network? I mean, there's there's an interesting semantic uh, question here because in, in a way, isolation is not solitude. In a funny way, people who have worked in corporations and in certain cases, one corporation for their entire career, for the bulk of their career, are in a greater state of isolation than Mm -hmm. someone who has worked for multiple companies or who has consulted or freelanced. We all have relationships. We all have friends. We all all have people that have been in our lives. And the older we are, chances are we have more people that we can connect with. I think the bigger question is, who are we and what do we want to do? And in the three-step process that I advocate, which I call the three elements career builder framework, it starts with defining your superpower. If you can define what that is that you deliver, that you do, that moves the needle, that can deliver transformation results for your client or your employer, then you have something to talk about. If you don't have that superpower, it's really hard to network because how do you start a conversation, right? What are you going to say? And I would also say further that if you have that superpower defined, that it's much easier to network because you're not searching for something to say. You're not tongue-tied, a wallflower at the, you know, the, at the bar, uh, in the, at, the, at the corporate event or whatever, wherever it is that you are, you actually know why you got up that morning and what your agenda was because you're looking to fulfill the ambition of your superpower. So that's what you talk about. In terms of the superpower, is it something you define yourself or could someone tell you what your superpower is? Well, someone can help you define it. But at the end of the day, you have to define it for yourself because it's yours, right? If you if you try to adopt someone else's superpower, well, it, it's not yours, right? So it's going to be hard for you to own it. It is difficult for many people. And I'm thinking of a current client right now who is mid-career, has had a very successful run in his field. He's done lots of different things and he can't quite pin down which of the things he's done is what he wants to do going forward. And he needs to do this because he's not getting traction. And that's something which happens is we're at the stage where people expect us to have it all figured out. They want us to be leaders. They don't want us to be followers because they can get cheaper, younger people to do that. So if they're going to hire an older person, they want to get some value out of it. So the superpower has to be authentic. It has to be you. But it's not in isolation, right? It is something that that you have to continue to refine as time goes on and as you converse with other people in your network. So the network really has to become a community. That's the second element that I teach, the idea of turning a network, which is kind of this, whatever, this random collection of people that you've known and, and met over the years, who among them are really aligned with you, what you believe in, what your values are, 
and your superpower. And they can support you in better defining it and better finding other people who can then support the work that you want to do. You want to really define it more narrowly. And people will often say to me, oh, well, but that's, that's like, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving money on the table. I've got, I've got, you know, there's so many things that I can do. Why would I limit myself to that? And my answer is, yeah, there's a lot, lots of things you can do, but, you know, in marketing being uh, every one solution means being no one solution. So you're going to get a lot more traction if you narrow it down to that superpower, define it narrowly, and you're going to get many more quality hits from people who are really interested in what it is that you have to offer. Don't worry about the people that are not on target with you. Just focus on the people who are really the most resonant with what you do. And then the third element, which I think is the part of it that really kind of brings it all together. And this alludes to something Kimmy were saying a little bit before about, you know, how do you kind of get it out there is this idea of professional branding through thought leadership. The idea that you need to stand up for what you stand for. And if you're feeling like you're in isolation, first define that superpower you now have something to talk about to maybe it's only a few people in your community that you really feel comfortable with, but that number is going to grow. And then if you have something to say, that's more kind of central to the why, to the why you're doing this and to what people are facing in your professional community and use LinkedIn for as, as an example, to reach out to new people, to talk about your thought leadership topics Find other people who resonate with what you're about. Go to mentoring opportunities, professional organizations. Uh, look for opportunities to talk about what's important to you. Do lunch and learns with companies. Mentor young, uh, younger workers. That's how you can build it out, build out your expertise, your reputation. And that's going to become a flywheel that just keeps getting richer and broader as you do what you do, talk about what you talk about, refine your superpower even more, and it's the gift that keeps on giving. All right, I'll give it a try. I really like what you say there, John. I must admit, I, uh, what I'm hearing uh, is that you want to find your community where you can be the hero rather than just part of the noise. Yeah. And if we can and, find and that where community can, where yeah. we are the hero, yeah, 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 it's, it's good for us and it's good for the people we yeah. do. As you you're, say, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Everyone in a community is a hero to, to everyone else, right? That's the essence of that community. You're mm -hmm. all kind of drawn together by these shared ideas, shared goals, shared values, and you're looking to improve everyone's life. So the the eighty twenty rule, the Pareto principle, you know, the, uh, the my, my take on that is that you want to be giving to your community eighty percent of the time and asking for favors twenty percent of the time. Mm -hmm. And that if you are approaching your networking and your community building as a giver, then you're going to reap amazing rewards from that. Mm -hmm. Because every time you pick up the phone or, a, a, or send a message, someone's going to say, oh, there's Jamie. Uh, I'm sure he's got something interesting to share with me. As opposed to, oh, there's Jamie calling and what does he want, right? It's the welcome guest, not the annoying pest. <laughs> there you go. Exactly right. Well said. I'm going to put Jamie on the spot about the superpowers because I know that that's an area where our listeners struggle to identify for themselves. And I'm going to start, ask Jamie, how long did it take you to recognise your superpower and has, has that changed as you've changed industries? How long did it take? Well, if I look at my watch now, I think it's still <laughs> almost there. <laughs> but it's probably taken me what, 80%, 90% of my career so far. And it's only now that I'm actually comfortable with it where um, uh, you know, the thing I'm dancing around is I tend to be able to build rapport quite quickly with strangers and, and that works for me in a whole lot of areas. And uh, I used to look at that in terms of offering what I call a world-class experience with the business I still run, that those same skills are transferred across to me doing one-to-one -one or one-to-many uh, communications with the, the role I'm currently performing, but it takes a whole long time. I think I think we get we get um, hints of what we think it might be, and I agree with you that we have to define our own superpower. But sometimes a nudge from people who are close to us along that path who say, you know, that thing you do, absolutely that's, right, that's really good, and, and it just shines a, a light on where maybe we should be looking. 
it's a cooperation. It really, and it's a build and it's, and it's, I, I like that you're saying it's taking you 80, 90% of your career to figure that out. Absolutely right. <laughs> right. And that, because we are, I mean, this sounds corny, but rather than thinking of ourselves as human beings, we're kind of human becomings. Right. <laughs> and, and I think if, if we, if we look at it that way, that gives us a, a large margin of error to experiment and to grow into who we are. I think that's the great gift yeah. of aging is to, is to get the sense of, oh my God, I've, I've come so far, right? I've learned so much. I feel so much more comfortable uh, now than I did 20 years ago, 40 years ago, right? So this is the gift that I think we have to embrace. And that's why the, I think the superpower can be something that is such a welcome idea for us to kind of yeah. put together and share with our community and have them feedback. And go, sure. Oh, you know, that's so right on. And, but you have, but have you thought about this? Let me add an element to that. Or, or why are you doing that? I mean, didn't you stop doing that years ago? It's like, yeah, why are you still talking about it? I don't know. Let's, let's get rid of it. <laughs> right. All of that stuff is great. It is. I must, I must admit you've simplified my whole life by, with the human becoming thing. I'm so happy oh. with that straight away. It's, <laughs> the pressure's just dropped by 50%. <laughs> it, exactly right. it makes it easier. Right. It's like I'm a work in progress. It does. It does. It's great. Hey, I'm going to quote that. And I'll quote you every time. Okay. So. Please. I'll, I'll, I'll be looking for the checks in the mail. John, just in terms of your own career, did you, trying to, to make the change to write the book, to focus more on helping other people, was it a defining moment or was it a gradual realisation that that was where your strength was? It, it was more gradual, but and, and I feel like it was like a ping pong a game back and forth in many ways. But it, it's very funny. I had a I had lunch last week with a, a former colleague of mine from one of my first jobs as a literary agent. And I really hadn't kept up with him, but a series of circumstances arose and we decided to get together. And he said to me, so you're career coaching now? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, it makes perfect sense because you started out as a literary agent helping people figure out how to sell their works and coaching them on how to be better writers and better connected and you know learn the business and i thought he's absolutely right so i've i've basically been a people focused professional all my life in one form or another even when i was just focusing on content at the end of the day making a film is all about people it's all about casting the right people for the right roles both in front of and behind the camera. So there is a consistency to this, but I really hadn't thought of it that way. It's interesting, <clears> right? How these things, these <throat> themes tend to emerge if you're looking for them and help us uh, define the work that we do, uh, even through all of these changes and, and, and workarounds. And, I, and I, I find those underlying themes to be really emblematic of most of, if, if not everyone that I work with. And that's really what we look for in my coaching work is to really find those underlying themes that are the, the core motivation and the core skill set that uh, that people bring to the work that they do. So in terms now of our listeners deciding that, yes, they, they need to sit down and think about this and work through the process, tell us about the book. Is the book going to be a, a workbook for them? Well, I, what I would suggest is an easier way to go about this is to is to work with a uh, a worksheet that I have on my website. And what you do is go to uh, johntarnoff.com. That's J-O-H-N-T as in Tom, A-R-N-O-F-F as in Frank.com slash four questions, the number four questions. And that's a worksheet that uses the Ikigai questions to help you figure out what you do best, what you love to do, what your world needs, and what you can get paid for. And that's, I think, a great start to this process because it's going to get you going on all sorts of uh, pathways and help you to reach out to the people who can help you and support you in this process to start the conversation going. Excellent. Well, we'll put that link and we'll put the link to the book as well on the yeah. website. Now, just before, before we go, it, the people listening can't see, but I'm very intrigued by the photo of the dog behind you. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> so that is, that is my uh, Australian shepherd, uh, May who is uh, eight years old. And that was painted by my partner, Dina, who is a wonderful artist. Beautiful. So, uh, Beautiful. Yeah. So she, she painted it for me so I could have, I mean, May is around here somewhere. I think she may actually be out in the, out in the garden, but uh, she's a, just a 
wonderful little Aussie that uh, makes our lives uh, <laughs> complicated and fun at the same time. Always. What a beautiful man you are. John, thank you for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure to hear and to share our journeys. And thank you to Jamie as well for contributing your part in the case study. Thank you. But, it's been great to meet meet and speak with both of you. And I uh, really appreciate uh, the opportunity. It's been a great conversation. I've had lots of fun. So thank you for joining us. So, and uh, we'll certainly put the links, as I said, on, onto the, the page. As I said, we'll put both of those links onto the page for the podcast. We thank Jamie Wadley for joining us in Fuliana's absence. I'm Kim Bailey, and this is Inside Exec. Thank you.